Hi, welcome to Teardown Tuesday. We love vintage computers here on the EEV blog and I've got a real obscure one for you today. This is the only laptop manufactured in Australia. It's the Delmont Magnum, otherwise known as the Kookaburra. This dates from 1983, and yes, it is MS-DOS uh, compatible, ran DOS 2.11, made in Australia, and ta-da, look at this beauty, oh, what a bobby dazzler, oh. <laughs> We've got an 80 by 8 or 80 by 16 LCD, depending on when it was made. The early ones were 80 uh, by 8, uh, around about 83. It was discontinued in 1986, cost about 3,000 Australian dollars back then uh, for the 96K RAM model or uh, four grand for the 256k model wow and check this out i love this lever here that actually just tilts you can't <laughs> just tilts via way of just this metal bar in there that lcd oh my goodness that's horrible <laughs> Anyway, this would have been reasonable at the time, uh, 1983 vintage, and as I said, the only laptop ever made in Australia by uh, Dalmont. It's the Magnum is the model, but internationally uh, it was called the Kookaburra, probably even called that here as well. Hands up if you had one of these puppies. Apparently they only ever made uh, 11,000 of these things. It's got an 80186 processor, which is uh, which was really powerful for the time. I don't know uh, many computers that use the 80 186 back then. I think the Tandy 2000 did. And it's got these, if I can get in there. Uh, that doesn't sound good. ROM cartridges. Look at this thing. So it's got the Mag Writer. So that would be the word processor. And Mag Calc version 2. Oh, it's been updated. Um, and yeah, it's got these little uh, cartridge, the ROM cartridge uh, programs in it, but it didn't really have any other uh, removable storage in it. And that was a yeah, pretty big downside of this thing. And here's an old ad for the thing, which is hilarious in a local uh, newspaper here. And apparently it had a 20 hour battery life. Now we actually know who the designers of this are. According to the Wikipedia page for this, yes, there is one. <laughs> There's a few fanboys out there apparently. Um, John Blair is the original designer of this thing. And once it went into production, uh, then the engineer was taken over by uh, Terry Crews. So I wonder if those guys are still around in the industry they are, drop us a line. On the back here, haven't got a huge amount of stuff. One big expansion connector here. This would be a custom jobby for whatever, I don't know. Um, anyway, standard uh, 0.1 inch uh, header there. Then we've got dual 15 way D connectors. Not sure what they're for either. We've got a pot in there, maybe for the uh, LCD contrast would be my guess. And an RCA. Um, is that monitor output perhaps uh, for an external monitor or is it audio output or whatnot and a dc jack and um well that's about it We've got ourselves a heat sink on there but anyway you know what we say here on the ev blog don't turn it on take it apart beauty made in australia you bloody ripper by dolmont electronic systems proprietary limited i don't know how to pronounce that Dolmont, Dolmont, I, yeah, whatever. Interestingly, um, AC voltage input. Hmm, anyway, it's the model DM256. So almost certainly this is the uh, 256 RAM model. So we might have the upgraded one here, but serial number, 1072. And that would be uh, pretty genuine too. They're not fudging the numbers there. That'd be unit 1072 off the production line. All right. <laughs> Let's see this puppy come out. Oh, I've probably got it back to front. Ta-da! Oh, is that our processor down in there? Oh, yeah, baby. Come on. Come on. Hang on. Hang on. Oh, yeah. Mid-80s vintage smeller, right? Anyway, this baby is going to lift up like that, and we are in like Flynn. Oh, what's that crustiness? Hmm, but oh, look at all the memory. Oh, memory. So it looks like we've had a slight problem with some sponge. Uh, <laughs> there, that's um, I'm not sure what they were doing with the sponge there. It's not like they're trying to hold down the ROMs. Anyway, got all the ROMs here and all the memory. Check it out. Oh, man. 
But yeah, that stuff's pretty crusty down there. Look at it. Anyway, that shouldn't do any harm. I'm not sure what the deal here is with the serial number. That doesn't seem to match up the one on the back. Uh, 6300. Anyway, uh, Dolmont Electronic Systems, the Magnum 256, copyright 1983. Thank you very much for playing. Now I'm going to guess that uh, this here is the main boot ROM, the BIOS, and uh, the ones down here, they must be MS-DOS, because this thing does not have a drive at all. Um, so yeah, that would have to contain, you know, there's got to be MS-DOS uh, 2.11 in here somewhere to actually load up. It doesn't load up from the uh, cartridges which plug in here and uh, over here. They're just uh, application uh, cartridges, like I'm probably implemented as, uh, you know, drive A and drive B, or oh, sorry, well, yeah, I mean, drive A could be the ROMs uh, down there to load um, MS-DOS, so yeah, I think that's what's going on there, but there's our 80186, so oh, I'll show you a close-up of that for all you fanboys. So it's in a ceramic leadless uh, package, and it's got this little holder on there, and there it is. It's actually not marked at all, but we have ourselves a date code, the uh, third week 1984, and other chips on here are uh, 83, late 83 vintage, so that certainly dates this to, uh, you know, the first quarter 84 manufacture. Look at this beautiful bodge we have here. Oops, we need to add some delay in there. Resistor, diode, cut three caps in there. Ooh, someone's tweaking something to get it working. Ah, <laughs> beautiful. Oh, yeah, look at that. You're welcome. Got ourselves another bodge on an op amp down in there near our uh, battery backup for our real-time clock. And there's a few more bodges elsewhere on the board, but this was actually very common back in the day to uh, find mods like this. You know, respinning boards, probably not as uh, quick and, and easy as it is these days. So, yeah, it, you know, the manufacturers had no problems doing that, even the biggies, uh, let alone a small one like this. We've got ourselves a relay and a mod next to it um, as part of our power input circuitry. So that's interesting to find a relay in there. Wonder what it's doing anyway. You power it up, you might hear it go thump. And we've obviously got our battery in here. I didn't really notice that. We've got a cover at the back behind the screen. But uh, very interesting that we've got some uh, springs up here. Check it out. Uh, I, like, what the... Anyway, not sure what's doing there, but I think I can get that off. Hmm. Yeah, that's a very oddly uh, designed cover. I'm not sure what's doing there. More of that uh, sponge that's just, look at that. It just disintegrates with time. Oh, wow. <laughs> Don't breathe it. But anyway, five D-cell NICADs. Thank you very much. Beautiful. To get 20-odd hours... Um, that's, well, because it's, you know, it's an 80186. Um, is it the CMOS uh, version? I don't think so. I think it was just a regular 80186. Was there a CMOS version? Hmm. Anyway, um, that was a really decent battery life back then. And you could just, of course, I, I presume it had uh, recharging circuitry in there from the external plug pack. But anyway, that's very nice. We can uh, power it up with that or try to anyway. Let's actually give it a quick power on. Let's feed uh, six volts into that from an external supply and uh, straight onto the battery terminals. Let's see if she powers up. Oh, oh, what is that? Can you see that? Oh, there we are. We've got some lines on the LCD. It's not, it's not terrific. Look at that. Hmm. No. Wah, 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 wah. And I also uh, confirmed that using the external AC input, uh, using my variable frequency converter here to generate uh, 8 volts, uh, what was it, 7 volts AC, and no, we got exactly the same uh, result, so, so much for that. Anyway, check out this power board, look, we've got four big beefy wires running over here from the uh, board, none of this connector rubbish, they're uh, soldered straight in, and that was the heatsink on the back that we saw before, we've got some uh, power transistors behind here, and our AC uh, diode bridge right here, so, so I don't mind that, you know, it's a <laughs> sort of a brute force solution, yeah, don't worry about thermals of the design, oh, what are we going to do, ah, just whack a separate board on the back and whack the heatsink out the back of the case, no worries, she'll be right.
Wait, hang on, it's working, check it out. I took all the ROMs out, actually uh, copied them, both the uh, MS-DOS ones and the uh, main uh, BIOS ROM, and I whacked them back in, played around a few times, it still didn't work, I was still getting that crap, but uh, I was finally able to uh, sequence it with the on-off uh, button on the front, and we're in like Flynn. Sorry about the contrast on this, but it is pretty darn horrible. And, uh, let's go, MS-DOS F12. Bingo, you are now in MS-DOS to restart the menu type menu. Whoa. Duh. Oh, there we go. We're in. Magnum, dock, mag zone, main menu, menu. Okay, so menu's just a batch file. We've got mode. Wow. Duh, slash, P. This brings back memories. Ah, oh, doesn't work. Let's run check disk. There it is, 128K total disk space. We only have a lousy uh, 67K or so left after uh, loading MS-DOS. Absolutely no surprise that this thing uh, works after all these years. There's not much to go wrong with them, really. It's all these old PCs I usually uh, tear apart. Pretty uh, robust tech from back then, so not ready, error read and drive B. Or, or, ignore, or, come on. And I'll actually press reset and see if that works. I don't like having the reset button here. I mean, look, it's just, it's just sitting there. Um, doesn't seem to do anything anyway. Um, so much for that. Maybe I've got to hold it down. No. Anyway, I'll turn it off then back on. No. No, I can't use the on-off key. Hmm. All right. You try turning the power off then on again. I turned it on. There we go. Press the on key. Oh. Hello, McFly. No. There we go. Latched on. No, we get that garbage again. So, it's a temperamental beast. We've got a uh, CDP 1854, that's an old school uh, UART there. And we've got uh, times two of those because there's two uh, D15s on the back. So, yeah, why they didn't use like D9s? No idea. Right next to the ROM here, we've got an Intel P8276. That's an old school CRT controller, because this thing does actually have a uh, CRT output via the uh, RCA connector on the back. So the interesting thing you'll note about this is what's missing here. Uh, we've got, you know, like you might think, oh, these are the, uh, you know, three big chips. But no, we've seen that these are the uh, UARTs. We've got a CRT controller. So where's the rest of it? The rest is pretty much all just Jelly Bean uh, logic, you know, 7400 series uh, logic, except for the 80C186. So where's all the stuff that usually comes in an 8086-based uh, PC? Because the 80186 is based basically an upgraded uh, 8086 core. Where's the, you know, the programmable interrupt uh, controller? Where's the timers? Where's the clock gens? All that sort of jazz. Well, the 80186, if you have a look at it, is actually a highly integrated processor. It actually integrates all that stuff in there as well as being a faster 8086 in general. So that's why they can get away with uh, none of the usual uh, support stuff. You've just got all your jelly bean interface logic and stuff like that. So that's it, we've got our processor, we've got all our glue, jelly bean logic, UART, CRT, all our memory, our ROM, our uh, clock calendar is uh, up here, that's that puppy up there, uh, with the battery and the uh, 32 kilohertz uh, watch crystal next to it, and Bob's your uncle, that's about it. Oh, I just missed out on the uh, backboard, had some extra stuff for the uh, buzzer and yeah, that's about it. Uh, the power transistors they'd uh, be using for the uh, charging as well, because no doubt this thing would be uh, rechargeable via the external plug pack here. So there you have it, the Dolmont Magnum Kookaburra, made in Australia. The only uh, laptop slash notebook ever made in Australia. The only other uh, PC compatible machine that I'm aware of that was ever made in Australia, and I stand to be corrected on this, is the Terran T40. Um, and I believe they even wrote their own ROM. They didn't use like Phoenix BIOS or anything else back then, which was quite remarkable, if memory serves me correctly. Anyway, um, this is 
really a horrible machine. Just like in terms of just the construction, I hate the screen, the mechanisms, all the all the silly little plastic clips to get the covers off. I don't know how on earth they expected these things to work. I mean, they're just bloody ridiculous. I, it's, yeah, physically it's a horrible design um, and expandability. Yeah, it's got some serial ports and whatever this uh, custom thing is. I don't know if they ever got around to selling any custom uh, interface for it. You know, why you'd bother with the CRT output, I don't know, but yeah. And no ability to um, save anything internally. No floppy, no nothing. And obviously this external uh, interface, you know, designed for some sort of uh, floppy disk based uh, system, something like that, perhaps some sort of storage solution, because where is the battery backed um, SRAM? I'm not sure if it actually had um, that internal battery. I think that's only for the real time clock. I'm not sure if that actually uh, kept the SRAM alive, like say the classic uh, Tandy 100, uh, for example, you could um, you know, just leave all your stuff in RAM. Anyway, if you had one of these, um, please let us know. The Kookaburra. Wow. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. I have a um, older and more interesting uh, retro computer teardown for next week. So stay tuned for that. So I've been wanting to do this one next week for quite some time, but this little interesting one uh, popped up and I couldn't resist it. <laughs> Made in Australia. Oh goodness. Yeah. I, whatever happened to uh, Dolmont uh, systems? Does anyone know? Hmm. And the designers of this thing? Anyway, yeah, not very popular. 11,000 odd sold. I, have I got a collector's item? Maybe. Anyway, next week's one I'm quite excited about. Uh, they're reasonably difficult to get in Australia at a reasonable price. I managed to pick one up and uh, we're going to do some more retro teardown next week. If you want to guess what it is, answer's on the back of a postcard. Catch you next time.